I'm gonna be up front with you guys. I didn't like Tiny Toons as a kid. Yeah, I know. What little I watched of it as a kid didn't hold my attention, and there was a lot of things that really annoyed me, and honestly, the theme song was one of them. I'm sorry, the intro's not good. It's one of those cartoons that makes it too obvious you're watching a kid show. I know I'm gonna get massive amounts of shit for all that, but I gotta be honest, you know? And of course, that was all when I was a kid. Now, I respect what it did, what it broke ground in and everything. It's a well-written show with well-written jokes, but to me, Tiny Tiny Toons will always be the cartoon that laid the groundwork for Animaniacs. That's the cartoon I liked. I thought it was just written so much better and the uh, jokes were a little bit more mature. Not very much more, but it's, it was just different. With that said, I'm a dumbass because Tiny Toons was part of a lot of people's lives and it was extremely successful. Successful enough that there was a slew of video games made for it. If it was a major 8 or 16-bit console, it probably had a Tiny Toons game. And there was a very high chance it was made by Konami. Man, I really miss when Konami was cool. I think they've been shit for so long, now there's people who have grown up playing video games who have never seen a good Konami game. Now I go to casinos and I see Konami branded slot machines and I'm like, fuck, I didn't want to bet a hundred. Give me my fucking money back. You piece of shit. But yeah, Konami made a whole bunch of these games and I was lucky enough to actually own some of them as a kid. I probably owned them because there weren't any good Bugs Bunny games. Or what? was there future video but let's go ahead and rapid fire this shit knock them out quick let's do tiny tune adventures on the nes i didn't have this game as a kid but after playing it i kind of wish i did it's not bad montana max has kidnapped babs bunny and is gonna feed her to a giant shark what i say about the giant shark i said no giant shark and the rest writes itself basically what you got is a pretty mario inspired side scroller you can get a heart which gives you an extra hit just like the mushroom buster can run pretty damn fast. So fast, in fact, it's hard to see what's going on. Or maybe my play ends as bad as my reflexes. Slow. We got a picture of Plucky Duck down here on the bottom. Now, what's that about? Well, at the beginning of the game, you can choose a second character to play as. Plucky, Dizzy, or Furball. Plucky can glide by tapping the jump button. Dizzy can spin! And Furball can do kind of a wall jump. I ended up being Furball the most because the wall jump lets you be a scumbag and cheat a lot of the level. So on my first playthrough of this, I got to the second stage, I went through this door, and then Elmira shows up. And I figure, okay, she's a boss, I'll jump on her head. And what's this? Oh, I'm dead? Oh, I guess you can't jump on her head. Despite the fact that this game has been teaching me to jump on enemy heads. All right, no biggie, I'll just try again. Oh, we're back at the character select screen. I mean, okay, I mean, I'll select somebody i guess okay apparently i don't have this footage recorded but it sent me back to the first stage and no i didn't game over let's look at the footage again i clearly had three lives i didn't game over apparently if elmira catches you she takes you back to the first stage of the level let me go ahead and put another bullet in my russian roulette gun so i go back to this quote unquote boss fight and i'm just jumping around going oh shit oh shit what am i supposed to do what am i supposed to do it won't let me do anything i can't jump on her head what am I supposed- uh-huh. So you're just supposed to avoid her until the exit pops up. Does that make any sense? Nope, nope. Hey, check out what passes as a boo in this game. It's the pumpkin-headed guy from Monster Party. Don't pick on him. Well, it turns out Elmira wasn't the boss. This is the boss, Gene Splicer, on a freaking skateboard. And guess how you take her out? You jump on her fucking head. Make up your mind, game. At least if she kills me, I can start back over. It doesn't put me at the first level again. The boss really isn't all that hard. It just took me for a ride that Elmira can't be jumped on the head, but this thing can. This game has the most bipolar rules. The only boss I really had any real trouble with was this monkey. You're not supposed to attack him directly. You're supposed to kill all his children. That's metal. And every time you do that, somehow that makes a block of his platform go down. Hmm, making platforms disappear to make a monkey fall down. Now, where have I heard that before? Oh, that's right. I fell off a ladder yesterday cutting limbs. I'm okay, but I'm bleeding out of one eye. Here's the only part in this entire game that thoroughly pissed me off. You're supposed to go up this elevator while a bunch of not bullet bills violently gang rape you with boo 
bullets. I can safely say if I was playing this on a real NES, there is no fucking way I could have done this part. So I have nine lives and I did die nine times. And when you game over, you go back to three lives and I died six more times. So this would have taken three game overs before I finally would have got this. And that's assuming I don't die at any other part of the game in the first of the last level, which is actually pretty aggravating too, because you have these night guards that throw shit at you and the lights keep going on and off. I did beat Montana Max, the final boss, and that might actually be the easiest boss in the game. And this ending shows you how much inspiration they got from Super Mario 3, you know, with the curtain and everything. And that's the first Tiny Toons game. Not too bad. Now, I didn't have that game as a kid. I had the second one. The second one is Trouble in Wacky Land. This is the NES Tiny Toons that I'm familiar with. I had this. The story goes that an amusement... Wait, wait, what? Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that what I think? It is. Oh, fuck me in the ass. Okay, y'all, don't worry about it. I'm a pro. I know how to deal with this. I'll fix this. Boom, fixed. So an amusement... <laughs> I gotta take it off, I'm sorry. <laughs> an amusement park got built in Acme Acres, and Buster gets an invite to it. But it's owned by Montana Max, who's put a bunch of traps in the rides because bad guy. On this one, you've got a stage select, and all but one of the stages is already unlocked for you. You need tickets to get on the rides, and that's what counts as your lives in the game. You can get more tickets by going to the ticket booth. The way you get tickets is by getting points. And you get those points by doing basically anything in the game. It sounds complicated, except it doesn't, and it's not. To get to the final stage of the fun house, you need either 50 normal tickets or what they call gold tickets, and you get those gold tickets by completing a stage. Now, here's the beauty part. You can get these gold tickets more than once on a stage, so you don't necessarily have to play every single stage, which is great because I fucking hate the roller coaster level. I might as well show you this one first because it's the worst one. Get it? Worst is first. I rhymed. It's funny. Laugh, damn it! You stand on the platform and try not to hit anything but you need lightning fast reflexes and before you know it you're dead as a hammer do you know how dead a hammer is well it's not alive is it it's dead you're dead dead as the hammer because the hammer is dead that's all i'm going to say about the roller coaster level all you do is die i hate it next level you know what? No, I'm not done. They give you the ability to flip over so you can dodge more shit, but you don't get the choice of which way you flip. Sometimes you'll flip left, sometimes you'll flip right. It depends on which way you're going. Notice how I keep showing you the same spot in the game. It's because this is where I keep dying. There's two enemies. There's two blocks in the way, and there's two blocks on the bottom there. Hell, that's just too much damn shit to keep track of when you're going 100 miles a damn hour. If you get through this fucking stage without any save stage, States, pat yourself on the fucking back, dude. This is some I wanna be the tune shit. The next level is one where you're furball on a water slide level. It's almost the same premise as the roller coaster level, except it is a lot easier. Memorize everything that's coming at you and don't get hit. There's also a little elevator platform thing where you just go up and down, up and down, and try not to get hit by anything. And I swear, I don't know if I just suck, but I think there's just one spot where you just have to take the hit. The hitbox on these spikes is kind of odd. Or maybe I just suck. That's very possible. Then you're Hampton on top of a moving train trying to take out bad guys. And no, you cannot jump on their heads. But you do have this awkward kick that works pretty good. This one's not too hard. The only thing that'll really fuck you over in it is sometimes the train will uncouple while you're in the tunnel. And if you don't know that, next thing you know, you're on a midnight train going nowhere. This level actually has a boss. He pops out of the train and you hit him like whack-a-mole. Nothing to it. Bumper cars, you hit the other rats into the hole and that's it. Except that's not it and it sucks. Every single thing that you touch in this level will knock you all over the place. You get your ass beat up enough, you lose all control and then you're just a headless chicken. You know they still live with their head cut off? On the second stage, do not go on this bottom level. You will not come out. You hit one damn wall down here and the ride begins, boy. I push every button on my PS3 controller taking the place of an NES controller and I I cannot control this thing for shit. More than once, I've actually won these stages out of dumb luck. It's not that they're hard, they're just aggravating. The final level, the fun house, is where shit gets real, though. Now it's a lot more like the original Tiny Toons game. And like its final level, they keep fucking with the lights. Doesn't seem all that hard at first glance, though. The music is kind of kick-ass in this level, too.
as awesome as this music sounds, it does kind of sound out of place in a Tiny Toons game when you think about it. The final level has a little bit of a maze thing going on with a bunch of doors that lead to random areas and sometimes even loop back to where you just came from. And sometimes your ass goes upside down. If you hawked a loogie, would it go on the floor or the ceiling? For that matter, what counts as ceiling and what counts as floor? Maybe it's a fleeling. This part is pretty neat. You could kill the enemies that are right side up when you're upside down. But then the cool factor goes away when you get to this part right here. I try to jump here. It doesn't work. I try to jump there. It doesn't work. I duck down to see if there's a crawl function and no, there isn't. I do everything short of the fucking hokey pokey and turn my ass around. Finally, I give up and get the manual out and it tells me I have to dash and slide. I didn't even know you could dash, let alone slide, but there you go right there. I gave up on this game as a kid because I got stuck on this exact part. Now I feel like a fucking idiot. Elmira is back and does she take you back to the overworld with just one hit? I didn't stick around to find out. You get to Montana Max, he throws bombs at you, you throw the bombs right back at him and that is it. I gotta say, I appreciate this game now more than I did then. Now to never play it again, again. There's one more on the NES, and it's more of a program than it is a game. It's like Mario Paint, kind of. Cartoon Workshop. The game gives you a bunch of backgrounds, animations, scenes, all kind of shit to make your own cartoons. And I gotta say, the interface was painfully slow. It took me forever to just make one cartoon. I'm gonna pick this guy. He looks like me. All right, we're placing our little coyote dude in the scene. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You know what this reminds me of? Spider-Man Cartoon Maker. <laughs> Okay, Reggie, my movie is ready. Guys, this is gonna be the movie that will surpass Revenge of the Mad Madman. The Blue Shell Incident, that's kitty shit. This is the real shit. Witness my new feature film, The Rainbow Effect. Okay, I'm full of crap. You can't change the music. You know what upsets me most about this movie? YouTube will probably flag this as for kids. They don't understand my vision. They don't understand my drive to make film, to make plucky hump babs in the fucking face. Okay, I admit this is extremely wrong and I'm going to quit showing this now. Shoutouts to my dad who watches my videos and just had to see a duck and rabbit fuck each other. Now we see Buster doing a classic southern tradition called shoot fish in the face with a gun. That's all of that game I can stand. Now you've seen the Tiny Toon Adventure games on the NES, but there are more. Oh, there are so much more games. And the good news is some of them are actually good. But for now, we're going to put Tiny Toons on the back burner and we're going to go somewhere else. Somewhere awful. Next time you tune into Working Man Games, we are going to the cesspool of the gaming industry. The place franchises go to die. A seedy, shady, accursed hellhole. One that sucks all money and sucks all ass. The very mention of this type of game strikes anger and fear into the heart of the common gamer. The act of even stepping foot in this hard, atrocious excuse of a game genre 100% guarantees the loss of any resemblance of respect your fan base may have had for your games. Hitler begs for fucking mercy at the very sight of these abominations. Angry video game nerd writes a cease and desist note because I'm starting to sound too much like him right now. You may already know the genre I'm talking about. The one we all know of, but never speak of. Well, we're going there, kids. We're going to play mobile games. Alrighty then, kiddos. Did you enjoy that? God, I hope you did. 
If you didn't, then you probably didn't even make it this far. So I'm just going to assume if you made it this far, you liked the video. Well, guys, I had no idea it had been this long since I had put out a Working Man episode. And I want to highly apologize for that. I'm going to be a lot more frequent, I promise. I've got something really special planned for April Fool's Day. If you're a leftover subscriber from my YouTube poop days, you might enjoy it. That said, I've got a mess load of episodes lined up. I just need to get off my ass and do them. I mean, heck, I've got time now. Now, what with us being all cooped up in the house. In other news, I am highly considering starting up a Patreon, but I want to hear from you guys. If I start up a Patreon, what would you expect to see from me? I want to give patrons like early access to uploads. I want to do a Discord server and shout outs at the end of the video, all that good stuff. So yeah, if you want more information on it, I've got two Twitters going right now. I've got the Working Man Games Twitter and I've got my personal Twitter. I'm Stuart K. Riley. My coffee page will stay open for people who don't want to commit to a monthly thing. They just want to get of like just a couple of bucks as a donation one time but if you're interested i'm starting up a patreon so there'll be a link for it soon that said if you're completely new here hey how the fuck are you doing man maybe you want to click all that bullshit all us youtubers tell you to click on if you subscribe to me i will give you uh uh oh this bag of cheez it's it's full it's all yours dude